Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, it is a new month, and that means there is going to be a Linux Mint update. So I did want to go ahead and talk about the things that they had mentioned on their latest blog post, which are really cool, really sweet updates. And so, of course, uh, to get into this, we do need to look at the last month's update for just a brief moment. And of course, we did a video on that, but uh, back in the September's update, which was at the end of September, remember they were redesigning the default Cinnamon theme. I stand behind this one because as I've said many times, while Cinnamon is my favorite desktop environment, the out of the box Cinnamon experience, unless a distro polishes it, is abysmally horrid. Uh, that being Arch and Debian and anybody else who you can install Cinnamon through the repo, which is almost every distribution, but who does not have a specific Cinnamon build. So the Linux Mint Cinnamon is absolutely beautiful. Manjaro Cinnamon is absolutely beautiful. There is a uh, Cinnamon respin for Ubuntu. It is beautiful because those distributions have taken the time to polish out the cinnamon theme or create a custom cinnamon theme, basically make that theme match what they want their overall distro to look like. But for distributions like Arch and Debian, just because their purpose is the core and not polishing up the, the desktop environments, they're left to whatever the defaults are. And so the default of cinnamon was pretty bad and they acknowledged it was pretty bad they said it's it's mostly bad so we can test it really however in this era where most most distributions and their desktop environments out of the box do have a little bit of polish it is good to bring cinnamon with some polish if you don't install any other theme on top of it and that's what they had started to work on and this is really what brings us to our updates for this particular month and so in the October updates uh, from November 3rd, just a couple of days ago, we do have some updates and we'll go ahead and talk about what we let in by first. And that is the dialog boxes are certainly one of those big parts of the Cinnamon desktop environment. You get notifications to log in, notifications for display settings, all sorts of these notifications. And they have in the past been based on uh, the GTK theming, which is something they're trying to moving away from in their redesign. And so they are using clutter to redesign these to match the other elements. Now, as I said in my previous video, I don't like this modern rounded corner crap that's going on, but I acknowledge it's going on everywhere. We're just going to deal with it and let my personal preference go to the side. This looks way better than it did before. So I stand behind this and frankly, I think they're doing a really good job. So this is just, uh, they have continued to, uh, to migrate these. I think they look good. These look great, and uh, so they are continuing to move in. The other new feature we are getting in Cinnamon, this is another one I have been critical of in the past. Uh, this is Nightlight, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of this, but I recognize a lot of people are, and it is something that should probably be included in the core of a desktop environment, being as that it is in several other ones. Now, if they could get that... Uh, the brightness indicator on there as well, that would probably be sweet, but hey, this is a step in the right direction. Now, in the past, they have installed an application called Redshift, and I have talked about that application in the past. It's based on this idea that if you look at more blue light at night, it keeps you up. It is not true. Um, there are studies that have demonstrated that, and there are studies that have debunked that. Uh, I stare at my computer screens until I go to bed, and then I have no problem sleeping at all. So. If I'm any indicator, that's probably the case, but you know, um, I understand that people want to do this. I know a number of people that take advantage of this. The problem with Redshift is it was not integrated into the settings. You had to install it, or if it was already on your system, like uh, Linux Mint had it installed, then you would have to go in and you'd do the adjustments in, a, in an application that is not integrated in the settings. With this change, they are putting Nightlight into the Cinnamon core, which means any desktop environment, uh, Cinnamon desktop environment you install on a distribution 
out of the box in the settings is the ability to change that so you don't have to install any third-party applications. So for that, despite this is a feature I will never use, I absolutely think it is ready for this to be put in, being as that it is a common feature in most other distributions, uh, operating systems, and desktop environments. So that is really cool that it's in there. Uh, so they are, of course, going to be removing Redshift because of that. And uh, the biggest uh, indi um, issue behind this, in addition to the integration, it also, Redshift only works in X. And if you are using Cinnamon's default uh, or Cinnamon's experimental Wayland for testing, you cannot use that Redshift. While their new Nightlight impl uh, implementation here, you can use this if you are running experimental Wayland. So it's directly into the settings. It works under X or under Wayland, and uh, it's going to ultimately be a, a good resource. So hopefully we it'd be nice if we see like a spice or, or something that we can have a setting on our panel or something to adjust it. Uh, that'd be cool. But uh, hey, if as long as it's there in the system and you can set it up how you like, that's really cool. So that is everything related to the software itself. Everything else is actually related to other items. Th this is nice here. Uh, they are starting to work with framework. So this is a great laptop company that creates effectively modular and very easy to replace uh, or repair computers. So you can see here in this picture down here, they have these expansion cards. There's an Ethernet, USB-C expansion card, so USB-A expansion card, HDMI expansion card. So you can literally take a framework laptop, you can buy these expansion cards, and you can build your laptop with the number of ports that you want. So I had a brief look over at their system. Right now, you can only buy laptop computers with um, windows on them so ugh, you know uh, but in the future we might see a Linux Mint option or they do have the option right now to get it shipped without any software licenses so you don't have to pay the extra money for the Windows license key you'll get the laptop shipped to you without any operating system at all and then it's very easy to install Linux Mint or your other favorite Linux desktop so the idea here is you choose your basic core laptop. They have a 13 and they have a 16. Uh, they have Intel and AMD processors available. And then they are upgradable. They are modular. So if there's a, a new version of HDMI that comes out and you have a need to run the latest version, you can literally buy the new port, simply pull out the old HDMI port and plop the new one right in place. And so here you can see, here's the uh, display kit, here's uh, expansion cards, uh, there's, you can get various colors, so you can build a computer with a variety of different uh, colors here. So you can see here is the core of the computer, and then you can see all the various modular parts. So this kind of goes back to that day where you can literally build the computer that you want. So if you go over to the shop tab, uh, then we have DIY or they have some pre built and even their pre built they're, um, I mean, they are still pricier than, than I, I like. They are coming in at a little under a thousand or just a little over a thousand if you DIY it yourself. So that's actually really nice. So this guy here is an AMD Ryzen 5 7640. Uh, what is it? Uh, is that a 1.5 or 2K or something. We have 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, 55 watt hour battery, Wi-Fi 6E, and this is Windows 11. Uh, so, uh, of course, if you DIY it, you can probably build something similar to this, cut off the Windows license fees. And then there's performance, there's professional, here's an AMD Ryzen 7, um, up to a terabyte storage, 32 gigs of memory, that's 1500. So then you can do various uh, adjustments to it. So this is actually a, a pretty cool system here, uh, even if you go over to your DIYs. So here you can compare it, here's your, uh, your configuration, do you want Intel or do you want Ryzen? And then from here, uh, you can choose which Ryzen you want. Here's your standard, 2.8K. Here's your U. So you can see that you can pick your, your chip there. And then you go down to your memory, and you have um, a variety of memory configurations. Look at that, up to 48 gig. That's sweet. Let's do something simple here, see what we can do. So there's that. And then operating system, you can bring your own. You can even get it without storage. You can hit none take 39 bucks off 
for your storage if you think you can get storage or if you have a lot of it. So operating system, bring your own, and then you can choose your bezel color options. You can choose your keyboard. Choose my power adapter. There you go. Once you choose your power adapter, now you can choose your expansion cards. So each card be used in any of four expansion card slots. We suggest four or more expansion cards and at least one USB-C for charging. So here's two USB-C, a USB-A, and an HDMI. Uh, but you can choose your cards. We have USB-C, um, aluminum, USB-C orange, USB-C lavender, green, red. We have um, USB-A, HDMI third, uh, Ethernet, uh, a display port, micro SD, SD. So you can really uh, get these computers exactly what you want. So it's actually really nice to, to see that. And then here you can do, what's the price of that? So that computer there, as we put it together, comes in just under $1,000. So this is a really nice uh, system. And then, of course, if you have a need for different expansion ports, you can create different ones. So that's a neat uh, ability to work with that, that company there. And they're uh, working to make sure that all of the hardware and software and everything is going to be all compatible. So that's cool. So the last thing is Hello Tux, which is where you could buy Linux Mint gear, including the old logos, new logos, and a variety of different color shirts. Uh, what they actually said here is they can't source the green shirts anymore. And so some of those, uh, they can't source the, the green mint shirts anymore. And some of the sizes are missing and some are reduced. So if you wanted Linux Mint uh, gear, you can go ahead and buy that before they run out. So it does look like they're going to continue by uh, selling things through Hello Tux. It's just they can't source their green shirts anymore. So if you want one of those green Linux Mint shirts, now's your time to order one. Um, so that is the uh, limit to our updates today. Uh, very nice updates. Good to see they're still working on uh, new features and possibly getting new laptops being able to be purchased and shipped. Again, I wish that we had the ability to buy a cheaper computer that's not for the latest and greatest for the developers because Linux does still work great on some of those. However, that being said, these are still great updates and it's wonderful to see a computer company that I can buy a computer out of the box with Linux. So I'm looking forward to seeing the time that we can actually go into that system and select I want Linux Mint as the operating system. Um, hopefully we get to that point. So there are our Linux Mint updates for the month. Uh, let us know your favorite features among this list in the comments down below.